Um, so, so hi, hi everyone. I'm um, Tim Franson, a web and graphic designer and technology to design at uh, South Bank University. And today I'm going to um, talk about a project called Map of Essex 1777. Um, and there will be an opportunity to explore the map and find a cartographic folly um, to be entered in, into a prize draw to win a, a one-off A2 um, print of one of the associated um, engraved sheets, which is that's the, that's the prize. So, so map, map of Essex is a, an open access resource which shares a remarkable um, 17th century map of the county and supports all modern Hang on a second. Supports all, all modern um, desktop and mobile platforms for the benefit of students, teachers, historians, researchers, and um, other interested people. I produced a map of Essex using scans and digital images from the Essex Records Office, and the Spanish um, Virtual Library of Bibliographical Heritage and Layers of London, another um, map-based history project. Um, here are three iterations produced today, so from the left to the right. Uh, version one in 2017, using scans of an Essex um, Records Office volume published in 1950. Version, version two in um, two, 2018 using scans of the original map courtesy of the head of digital projects, Julio Cordell um, Elviro at the Virtual Library of Bibliographical Heritage and a GPS version three um, in 2021 using a geo-referenced um, digital image prepared by Layers of London and um, GIS officer Lewis um, Calvert, so GIS is um, Geographic um, Information System or Systems. In 2000, 2010, um, I bought this 18th century timber frame cottage in Rockford, Essex, and while researching the building's history, um, became aware of the pioneering work of cartographers John Chapman and Peter Andre. To not not the, not the musician um, who who surveyed the the county of Essex between 1772 and 74. So that's the the two fellows there. The resulting atlas of 25 engraved grave sheets plus a key sheet showing the arrangement of the plates was published in 1777 um, for the use of landowners, professionals, and businessmen. The atlas shows about um, 10,000 uh, place names, 5,000 farms, um, 400 churches, and 400 mills. And was the, the first of the entire county that was extraordinarily detailed, so it's about two inches to, to the mile, and, and accurate. So um, I, I discovered this um, Essex Records um, publication entitled A Reproduction of a Map of the County of Essex, 1777, by John Chap Chapman and Peter Andre in Southend Library. Um, the publication consists of a title page, introduction and, and end matter, 24 plates and, um, and that key plate, printed on heavy um, cartridge paper and half the size of the original um, engraving. The hardback edition cost 20, 21 shillings. There was a soft cover edition which cost um, eight shillings and sixpence, or you could buy separate sheets for sixpence from booksellers. Um, to extend the publication's original intention um, to enable a wider public to enjoy this remarkable map at low prices, um, so that's sort of noted in the publication's end matter, um, I decided to uh, produce high resolution scans of the publication and began kind of researching the best way to, to share, share the map. Um, I settled on a range of technologies and uh, process, discussed a little later, and built a prototype version one, which I shared with the Essex Records Office, um, who after a bit of to and froing, um, granted permission to make, make it public. 
here's an example of one of the plates, um, plate, plate 18, and, and a detail. Um, version one was, was well received and shared amongst the network of local Essex history groups. Whilst this was happening, I began contacting libraries, archives, trusts, individuals in possession of the original atlas, explain the project and um, possibilities of scanning the original um, plates to produce a sort of envisioned version, version two. Um, the responses weren't promising um, from uh, £6,900 for digitisation and online permission fees for five years um, to a dis disappointing silence. So, um, being, being quite tenacious, I scoped beyond the UK shores and discovered the Spanish Ministry of Education, Culture and Sports um, Virtual Library of um, Bibliographical Heritage had the Atlas in their collection. Um, aided, aided with Google Translate, my Spanish being um, uh, non-existent, um, I emailed the head of uh, digital projects. Within 24 hours, I received a reply from um, Julio uh, Cordell Elviro, um, who loved the, the version one prototype. Within a, within a week, I received um, 25 um, archive master files and was gra granted um, perpetual online permission in support of the open access publication project. So version, version two had been given the, the green light, essentially. Um, here's, here's an example of the same, same plate um, and, and, a, and a detail. Um, and here's, here's a, a side by side comparison of the um, ERO um, publication, which is kind of a bit like a photocopy, if you like, and, um, and the superior um, scans of the original engraving. Um, so what, what's on the map? Um, so there's buildings, um, except in streets, at nearly every house and cottages show. Um, uh, uh, sort of conventional signs denote windmills and water mills and the principal seats and their owners and most of the manor houses and farmhouses are named. Roads, this is the, the, um, the first uh, printed map of Essex to show minor roads, bridges, milestones and turnpike gates are, are also indicated. Um, the, the countryside, um, parks, woods and heaths mostly named are drawn. The atlas indicates um, ac accurately the area of many a common um, and village green lost or drastically reduced because of the enclosure acts. Um, the, co the, the coastline, um, every creek, wharf, um, key, ferry, duck decoy and cliff is shown. Distinction is made between um, marshland and saltings. And churches, so we've got in the middle here, Ashington Church, uh, are shown in a, in a sort of perspective view with some, some attempt to denote styles of, um, of towers. Um, so here, here's an overview of um, the three stage production process um, and software um, utility and open source JavaScript li library that was used to, to produce um, version one, version two, and the um, OER 23 edition, which you'll be able to explore um, shortly. So stage one, um, Photoshop to stitch together the, the 25 um, separate plates into one large image file. I sort of call this the um, production image, um, and I've popped in GIMP as well, so that'd be an equally um, capable tool to, to do that, not, not wanting to be a, an Adobe salesperson. Um, uh, GDAL, so that's um, Geographic uh, Data Abstraction Library. Um, so GDAL, an open source um, software library for reading and writing vest, vector and um, raster geospatial data formats. Within the library, um, so there's a whole range of different tools. I use um, a utility called uh, GDAL to, to tiles um, to basically generate small tiles um, from the, the large production image to enable online viewing. 
And um, finally, uh, stage stage three, uh, Leaflet is the leading open source JavaScript library for creating mobile friendly um, interactive maps. So Leaflet is designed with simplicity, performance and uh, usability in mind. It works efficiently across all major desktop and mobile platforms. Um, can be extended with um, lots of plugins, has an easy to use and well documented API and straightforward readable um, source code, which is uh, all very well commented. So um, production process stage one. Um, here's the production image of the 25 um, sheets um, stitched together. Um, the PSB image file um, size is a huge 9.1 gigabytes and you could um, print this image uh, file sort of three meters high um, at 300 dots per inch without any kind of pixelation or degrade. And so I popped um, Mel Gibson or William Wallace um, as a kind of, um, so you can get an idea of scale. Um, so uh, anyone who's used Photoshop, Photoshop um, PSD format, so Photoshop um, document that stands for, um, switches to something um, called uh, PSB. So that just stands for Photoshop the big. Um, when canvas width or height exceeds um, 30,000 30, pixels, um, the file is exported um, as a 30,000 pixel wide JPEG. Um, the maximum Photoshop can export in this format, um, bringing the file size down to, to about 810 10 megabytes. In stage two, so this diagram shows the next stage of production using the uh, GDAL to, um, tiles um, to, to generate small tiles, which are like 256 um, pixels square, so kind of teeny tiles um, from the exported um, production image to enable efficient online, online viewing. GDAL um, to tiles um, is written in Python is run in a text-based terminal and involves just one command line where one configures parameters such as the loc location of the, the Python script, um, the production image and the output folder to export tiles as, as shown here in just some red outlines, uh, underlines, sorry. Um, other parameters um, shown here are the, the kind of zoom level to render so you can determine um, how, many, how many zoom levels there are and it, it chops up um, tiles accordingly. And about 10 minutes, um, the, the process is complete and the output folder contains about 15,000 um, tiles and the size is crept up to um, 2.4 gigabytes. And so stage, Stage three, um, finally, just the, the web view is created you, with HTML and CSS and the, the uh, leaflet Java, JavaScript library. And all, all this, including the tile file uh, folder, um, is uploaded to a um, green web server. More about um, green hosting a little, a little later. So since um, version 2's launch in 2018, Mac of Essex has received over 30,000 unique visits, comprising about 45,000 sessions. Um, notably, visits um, increased during um, lockdown. So you can see that kind of big jump up there. Um, uh, so during the, the um, COVID-19 pandemic, uh, reflecting its use to support homeschooling, informal heritage learning and um, self-directed self um, activities. Um, as a result, um, Map of Essex was selected as a uh, featured learning resource by Essex 2020, a year-long uh, county-wide celebration of science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics and was nominated and notable runner-up for the International Society for the 
history of the maps in our global prize um, in map history 2021. So just down, down the bottom there. Um, additionally, the map has featured in a Museum of London's Havering Hoard, a Bronze Age mystery, Epping Forest interpretation boards, so here on the left, and, um, and Layers of London uh, dot, dot org as well on the on the right. Um, so I, I shared um, version two's digital assets with Layers of London. Uh, this other, um, another map-based history website um, developed by the Institute of Historical Research at the University of London. Here you can see the map of Essex integrated into the, the Hue Map um, interactive map platform that they use. Layers, Layers of London includes a range of historical maps and information overlays my work it keeps trying to install new software on my computer hang on a second <laughs> can't get rid of them um overlays uh so yeah information um overlays about various topics and and themes so the the dark area you see there is an overlay of um 24 000, um aerial photographs of london taken by the ref immediately after um, World War II, so you can see the kind of the bomb damage. And this was a um, crowdsourced um, project to do all that that work, and all the georeferencing was done by schools and and volunteers, of which I was I was one of those. Um, so through this partnership, a georeferenced um, map image. Um, so that's a geo tiff that's the file format um, was created for the gps enabled version of the map of essex to support kind of field trips um, geo referencing is a, a technique where you kind of you kind of manipulate and position a scanned map of an aerial photograph or um, or a scan map so it overlays over a, a spatial reference system so you kind of you, you kind of tweak and you pin things and, and kind of um, manipulate it so so the gaps um, are the results of that manipulation so you can see kind of where areas don't quite map on um, so if you imagine a kind of satellite image behind behind that um, but it's, it is quite incredible how um, close the 18th century map is to today's precisely measured locations on the surface of the of the earth and here's a, here's a screenshot of Map of Essex, the, the GPS version, the little red dot there, um, that's my home, um, uh, shows, shows one's, one's location. The, the web viewer and the, the new GPS tracking functionality is dealt with using the Leaflet JavaScript library, as with version 1 and 2. However, the georeference tile set um, was created and hosted by um, map tiler um, desktop I think it's now called engine piece of software um, uh, another another and a, and a platform another mapping platform designed for developers for publishing interactive maps in web applications and, and mobile mobile for mobile devices So um, a bit about sort of sustainability, not including labour, which um, I provided uh, sort of gratis. Um, the Map of Essex costs about um, £100 a year to run, which basically covers green web hosting, um, domain registration and site maintenance and, and security. Um, the cost is met through um, plate printing print sales. So here's, here's one of the prints here, and, and simply donations, um, what, um, and pay what, what you, can, you can afford. And um, uh, presently, Map of Essex has generated enough funds to cover the next um, five, five and a half years. Regarding hosting, Map of Essex is hosted on a, a verified green hosting service. Further details about um, carbon polluting data, data centers and supporting the transition towards a green internet is available via um, the sort of, there's a floating 
climate emergency declaration and, and green hosting button, which is bottom right on, on the map of Essex website. Okay, um, so um, find the, 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 the folly. So um, cartographic follies are, are sort of deliberate, fictitious entries um, on maps to um, help reveal plagiarism or, or copyright inf infringement. So you'd, you'd, you might put a fake street or, or something, something like that. It was also um, a practice of kind of cartographers that are simply just bored and they just make, make things up. Um, so it can also be just for, just for fun. Um, so if you scan or visit that address at the bottom or, or scan the um, QR, QR code, this will take you to um, the OER23 um, edition. And um, I'd like you to kind of um, uh, the sort of challenges explore the explore the map and find the cartographic folly, which is the OER. You can see the folly just in the O of folly, and the uh, OER twenty three logo. So it's it's nestled next to a particular place place name. Um, if I just pop to the site, oh, there we go. So, so here's 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 this window here, and you can you can zoom zoom around etc. Within that, or you can click the um, full screen, and that will pop it out into a full screen of your your browser. A few little instructions there. Um, so just sort of similar to Google Maps on a computer, you can zoom in and out by using the the plus and Scroll down. The, the the plus plus and minus um, buttons by double clicking so you can just sort of double click and um, or you can use the mouse scroll wheel to to, to zoom zoom in and out and what you'll notice is those tiles building up um, so it's kind of like the images rather than this this uh, couple of uh, gigabytes of image um, it's pulling in little little teeny squares um, and to, to move around uh, the map, you simply click and drag or use um, your keyboard arrow keys. On a mobile, you just use typical navigation gestures um, such as um, press and drag to move around and the map around the map and double tap or pinch and spread to, to, zoom, to zoom in and out. Okay, so it'd be quite a task for you to kind of find it with that just being the, the, um, the so I've got a little um, clue here, um, clue to the Follies location. So in uh, 1274, where in Essex was this revered Scottish national hero possibly um, born? And so it's a contested um, possibility, but you know, the village says definitely um, this person was born there. Um, when you when you find the folly, email um, a screenshot to um, myself at mapofessex.uk um, by noon tomorrow to be entered into a prize draw to win a one-off print, a two print, reprint of the associated engraved um, sheet. And the winner will be announced and receive the print at the end of, end of the conference. Just a, a few shout outs. Thanks. Thanks to um, the generous, generous uh, institutional supporters and individual donors who have collectively helped to realise the project and ensure this, this remarkable map reaches the widest public and remains freely access, accessible for, for everyone. <coughs> Um, also to LSBU um, for funding travel and accommodation, ALT for the um, scholarship award and uh, the print, room, print um, room group um, for pro providing the print giveaway. And thanks, thanks for listening. How are we doing?
that's you. You just you yeah, five <laughs> minutes. I, I, I did so time it last perfect. night. <laughs> perfect timing. Good. Literally. <laughs> So I guess any any kind of questions or um, further further clues? <laughs> Is the map also downloadable for reuse in? Um, Not North? only only kind of um, in Scroll middle to, middle. To, to, to enter it by HTML, but also do you have it as? Um, do I, I I I have, but not it's not available. Yeah, so um, it's not really so in a way, I, I was quite open with it um, originally, and there was a couple of couple of people that said, "Oh, could I have this?" and "Could I?" Yeah. And I was, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." And then they started printing them for profit. Okay. So I've sort of paused paused that because it's kind of one of the things that yeah. enables yeah. the the thing to stay. Yeah, kind of open. because we work with Arch Archis and we make interactive maps yeah. and, and lay out three four maps on each other to see the growth of the city or an environment. Yeah. So then in because you're talking about sustainability, then we have it open and make it sustainable and yeah. interoperable between higher education institutions for the use. Yeah, I mean the the um, the actual map itself can be overlaid over. Yeah, so no. it's just a, it's just a strip of code that needs to go into whatever GIS is. Um, so uh, currently, uh, I got contacted from the ge uh, geography department at Cambridge University, which are um, uh, doing a what's the project on uh, project about the wetland um, environment and mortality in England um, in the 17th and 18th century. So I've shared the, so they can kind of put that map. Mm -hmm. With their kind of data on more mortality, mm -hmm. um, uh, so it's it's really the the geo reference one, which is kind of the, the yeah, most uh, the, 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 the significant. Yeah. Reference all the materials, so I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that that's a little bit like the John Snow maps of um, cholera yeah. in London. So yeah. you know how they those enable us to look at disease in a in yeah. a very different different way. You know, so yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Any questions, Jonathan? Well, thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you.